Welcome back to the Drivers Hub and we have the BMW X1 18D M Sport back with us today. So we are going to be doing a proper day-to-day -day fuel economy test with it. Basically, how much it gives. And right now, the car is at a full tank. We have 700 kilometers. We have reset all of the values. So let's see how this diesel powerhouse of an engine, well, not really a powerhouse, but this diesel engine fares up on a day-to-day -day basis and how much fuel economy we can get from it. So it's been a couple of days since the last shot was taken and we've driven the X1 18D roughly 124 kilometers and we've been getting 14.1 kilometers to the litre which is insanely impressive for a car like this and we've only been driving in the city and yeah 13 to 15 kmpl is roughly what we've been getting. Today we have to head out to Mumbai for some document work that we have to pick up. Uh, so it's just going to be a quick journey to Mumbai. But now this is going to be a real test of you know what sort of mixed fuel economy that we're going to get with it. But I'm pretty sure this car is going to be super nice because yeah, it's been really really fuel economical. So let's hop inside and head over to Bombay. Across the first toll and we've been cruising at a, a roughly around 95 kilometers per hour and the fuel economy has again gone up we've gone from 14.1 uh, from where we started today in the morning to 15.6 so yeah this car is incredibly fuel efficient some things that I would like to point out uh, is that the highway experience of the car is really nice uh, yes, there is some amount of tyre noise coming in, but overall the suspension, the insulation, the comfort of the car is really nice on the highways. So, yeah, we're probably going to stop just before the second toll uh, at the food plaza to have a quick bite for breakfast. So, let's talk more about the car over there. So we've just gotten back from McDonald's and just want to talk about the storage situation. So whole bunch of storage. I have two cup holders over here in the front. I have a massive door bin as well. I mean, I can literally keep my whole burger inside over there. That's how big it is. And if I'm not wrong, this platform was initially made for an EV as well. So you have loads of storage space uh, beneath the center console as well. So yeah, in terms of storage, the X1 does not lack at all. So let's start up the car and proceed with our journey. Now this journey is a great indicator as to how the X1-18D will fare on the highway and in traffic. Our destination was near Carter Road, so after navigating the tight streets of South Mumbai, we finally reached. After our work was done, we headed over to one of our favourite shawarma spots in Mumbai for a quick bite before we headed back to Pune. I feel the X1 has become less sporty to drive in this new iteration, especially if you compare it to its competitors. But in exchange, the X1 gets the best interior space out of the German Trio, the most usable back seats for sure and a really good build quality. 
The suspension has also become much more compliant in comparison to the older X1, which is a big thumbs up for a family SUV. And now the X1 is available only in M Sport trim, which honestly looks really cool. Some safety features that the X1 gets is collision warning, lane departure warning, has a 5 star N cap rating and 6 airbags. The collision warning system found in the Mercedes cars seems to be very intrusive, but the BMW one is a bit more lenient. Since this new X1 is powered by a mild hybrid system as well, the coasting feature is really useful and helps the X1 maintain a good speed whilst being in coast in order to maximize fuel efficiency. Now maybe some people might complain that the X1 is no longer available in all-wheel drive trim, which is a bit of a shame but honestly, apart from proper adventure junkies who anyways won't consider a BMW X1 for their use, the X1 is mainly going to see narrow city streets and bumpy Indian highways for the most part and for that job it is very nice so after a couple of hours we are back over here in Pune and as you can see from some of the GoPro shots I was dead asleep uh, but we've just pulled over because uh, we had to take a couple of pictures of the X1 so we've come to this abandoned hotel I'm guessing so first things I do like the design of the X1 I think it looks very interesting and I like the fact that the grill actually kind of suits the car it's not too big it's not too small and it's in the perfect realm of you know size for this sort of a car I like the design of the headlights it, they have the inverted you know DRLs now instead of the not inverted DRLs, I'm not sure how to explain that, but I think you know the gist. Uh, something that I would probably change is the wheel size of this thing and the wheel design, of course. But again, this is a family SUV. So uh, if you change that and you get a larger set of rims, probably the comfort of the car will go for a toss. So we don't want that. So I'm perfectly fine with this sort of a setup. The side profile looks pretty all right. There's nothing much to talk about. You get some blacked out uh, roof rails on the top and some blacked out side skirts to you know make the car look a little bit uh, shorter than it actually is and give it a little bit more of a sporty look and at the rear you get this diffuser kind of design at the uh, bottom of the bumper and you have these really cool looking tail lights and in my opinion the best angle of the new x1 is at the back so the real talking point about today's test is to find out how efficient this engine over here is this is the b47 2 liter turbocharged diesel engine and it has a mild hybrid system as well and paired to this engine is a seven speed dual clutch transmission which is butter smooth i mean you can't even feel the shifts that's how smooth it is so i know a lot of people must be complaining that the power figure has dropped from 188 to 190 horsepower to 148 to 150 horsepower in the x1 18d m sport but i mean i don't know why people would complain about that because this is a luxury family suv at the end of the day so power doesn't really matter although it makes a healthy amount of torque at 360 newton meters of torque so i think so we'll talk about the fuel efficiency in just a moment let's hop inside and talk about some things on the interior i quickly want to talk about the interior of this car i think you guys have already seen the gla versus x1 comparo that we did but let me just quickly go over some things that i like and some things that i don't like i think so the previous gen x1 was just a little bit too plain jane a little bit too bland whereas this x1 is now futuristic super modern and yeah it looks really premium inside you get this lovely curved uh, display up front for your infotainment and instrument cluster you have this lovely finish on the dash which feels super premium you have soft touch materials on the dash as well you have uh, lovely ambient lighting all across the car you have Harman Kardon speakers and the Harman Kardon logo on the door illuminates with the ambient lighting as well now of course the new x1 shares its uh, platform with the ix1 so this floating design over here is of course because of the ev side of things that bmw is trying to do so you get some extra space over here you get this massive wireless charging tray for your phone uh, but some things that I don't like in terms of the interior, well, in the name of making it as futuristic and as minimalistic as possible, they have removed all sorts of buttons. So you have to do some really annoying stuff in order to get into some basic basic settings like if you want to do your climate control it's all on the screen even if you want to put your car into uh, only the drl mode for the headlights you have to fiddle around with the buttons over here and then go into a menu 
on the screen in order to access that. So some stuff like that is very annoying, but again, like this interior is lovely. The seats are super comfortable and are massaging seats. And the back seats are also much better than the Q3 and the GLA that competes with this car. And of course you get a huge panoramic sunroof. So overall, the X1's interior is a big, big thumbs up from my end. So we've just come back from Mumbai and yeah, this thing has been incredibly efficient. I think so this has been one of the most efficient cars that we have tested in this series and the numbers are actually pretty impressive especially for a premium luxury SUV. So since the start of today, uh, I mean the BMW infotainment can record uh, multiple different values and since the start of today we've gotten 20.1 kmpl since we've reset the uh, trip meter and everything for ourselves we have gotten 18.3 kilometers to the liter if i'm not wrong and since the last refuel we've gotten 16.7 kmpl and all of these values are super impressive the car is just at half tank right now and we've done i think so 439 kilometers or something of that sort and we could have gotten more I think so on the way back then I got a little bit impatient in some of the guard sections to overtake and also uh, overall this car is really efficient, very comfortable, has all of the creature comforts that you would ever want and overall I think so this is the best daily driver that you can buy in this particular segment. Looks really great, the interior is built very nicely uh, and yeah. The X1 is very impressive and I would highly suggest that you go for the X1 in this particular category. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, it's been Soham Saraf and I'll catch you in the next one.